All right, almost perfect attendance. Simply two more times on time and we will have perfect attendance. How's everyone doing tonight? Good to have you here on uh, Mastermind Academy. Hope everyone's good. I did see there was an error raised. Maybe it was an exception uh, that MG was not first in the chat tonight. Uh, YGBSM, congratulations for being number one tonight. Good job. We gotta. We really gotta make a number one's leaderboard. Maybe that's one of the like. You no, know, we gotta add that to the list of uh, of apps we might build. That's pretty dope. How's everyone doing? How you doing, MG? How you doing, Sayuko? How are you doing tonight? What's up, Bevy of Codes? Two days in a row. Congratulations. Uh, you know, t twice in one week is excellent. Usually you can only make it once. I really appreciate that you're here. Uh, Diarrhea, what's up? On time, every time, on time, gang. I'm glad we made it. The real deal. How you doing? Manage chaos. You're welcome, everyone. So, first off, it is storming like crazy outside right now. Uh, it just rained the hardest i think it's rained in a long time it's been storming like the storms have been pretty wild for the past couple days lightning's pretty wild um i'm sure there's some trees down so again hopefully we don't have any network issues hopefully we don't have any you know power issues so holding up pretty good right now i don't I hopefully i didn't just jinx it um but yeah i think we'll i think we'll be okay just know that if that does happen if anything does happen any abrupt shutoffs uh it's probably means my power went out again check my twitter uh, I'll let you guys know what's up if anything happens. Um, but tonight we are, you've reached the final uh, learning, uh, hands-on learning session of Decoded. So congratulations of the apprentice level of Decoded. You did it. You are uh, you're right at the end of that eight weeks. Uh, we're going to be learning a little bit about errors tonight and handling errors, uh, which is really going to help us as we kind of uh, move along in our journey. Uh, it's really going to round out kind of the base core concepts. Uh, it's going to allow us to dive a little bit deeper. So we learned a little bit of, like this was mostly learning kind of the hands-on uh, coding aspects of things. Uh, we didn't dive super deep into the computer science parts um, because I wanted you all to be able to do uh, as we move into the intermediate section, the journeyman section, uh, we'll be we'll be sprinkling in a little more uh, coding concepts, uh, computer science, computer science concepts in there uh, because we'll, we'll, we'll have a, a better understanding of how to, like when we use code to really uh, display them and truly really understand them, uh, I think it'll be a lot more understandable. Um, so yeah, so you've now, are gonna have a rounded out uh, skill set of just things you could do to solve almost just about any problem. Um, again, it'll take you a while to really learn how to own these skills and learn how to use them to be amazing. But uh, but you have them now. You, you got them all. So um, we'll knock this out tonight. This will be pretty quick, just like last night's um, Horizon stuff. Did not go to the end. Uh, it's be pretty quick. Um, and then we will just we can talk about whatever um, in preparation for tomorrow or Wednesday tomorrow's wednesday wednesday or thursday for our um our panel where we'll talk to some um some software engineers from different uh, organizations from different uh sectors of the community from different uh backgrounds um so you can ask your questions find out you know a little bit about how people did things who it is still going crazy out there so it'll be pretty fun took the power out of my block um a bit of my block yeah it is uh it really is it's, it's going crazy out there yes it is a master mindio you know it's okay I, I so i expected that i did expect it and when i made my twitch username i was like hmm maybe i should make a mastermind but because i was only able to get mastermind io on like twitter and stuff i was like oh, let me keep it you know keep it standard and then it became like a thing where i was like oh no one's gonna know what this is but then i was like it's gonna be a thing it's gonna be a thing that everyone's gonna say it wrong and i think i'm okay with that in the beginning uh so you know not even in the beginning i think i think i love that every time i follow someone master mindio and i'm like hey you know that's me it, that's you know that it's it's memorable you know master mindio um but i knew it was gonna be wild after i couldn't get the domain with the eye in it anyway so uh you know it's a thing yeah exactly it's a thing um but yeah we got a couple slides tonight let me let's full screen this where are we doing host f and academy view um we got a, we got a couple slides tonight we're gonna keep it real chill real informal errors uh, and handling errors is an important piece uh, important concept to learn as you're trying to solve problems uh but it's also not a crazy complicated uh you know paradigm so we should be able to get through it pretty quick have a little fun get hands on 
uh, and do some stuff. Uh, I did, I, I will say I used to be super afraid of errors and air handling and kind of how that world worked. Um, I don't know why it was like, it used to bother me, especially, I think especially, so, I think it bothered me because I'm not from, like, I wasn't building software for people. I was writing scripts and like, yeah, I will run in errors and stuff, but I would never need to handle them because generally um, it was only me and one other person maybe running the scripts or something. It's just, you know, if the, if, if, if the error, if there was an error, basically that meant the thing was broken anyway. Uh, so I didn't really need to handle anything. The, the program didn't need to keep going. I didn't need to take action. Uh, and I don't know, it was just something that eluded me a little bit. And I was like, I don't, this seems like, something that I don't want to know about yet. Um, but then once I learned about it, uh, it was like uh, when I got into Go, in Go you have to handle errors pretty explicitly, not pretty, you have to handle them very explicitly. Um, and so I had to, I was forced into the world of error handling uh, and properly um, and properly handling your errors and kind of understanding what's happening in the, in the application, what kind of errors you, errors you can come across. Uh, and again, it is uh, for consistency sake, for reliability sake in an application. Uh, errors are great. Uh, they're also very descriptive for troubleshooting. So um, I, as someone who writes a lot of um, a lot of a lot of scripts still um, tools per se to do certain things, I really like to uh, handle errors properly so that you know give the user as much feedback as possible myself being that user so i know what's going on um so i don't have to do as much troubleshooting i wish that uh more people would handle their errors better to make all of our lives easier um so that is what we're gonna be doing tonight. i didn't get any water i don't really have any uh announcements for you all besides i told everyone in horizons yesterday that after this is over, in between this and when we get to the intermediate section, I will drop a schedule for you either tomorrow or Thursday, or I mean, it'll come out either tomorrow or Thursday, but it'll be available at all times. It'll be here underneath the stuff and underneath uh, the videos, uh, as well as on the website about what's upcoming. Um, I'll probably take, you know, the first half of next week off, uh, probably Monday, and Tuesday off, and we'll start streaming again. Um, we're gonna be starting pipelines back up for anyone who's interested in that. Uh, we're gonna have a series where we're gonna be building um, building that tool that we started building during Operation Quarantine. Um, so there'll be more information coming out about that. Uh, we will also have a series, we're doing some uh, foundational series. So we'll, we're gonna do a Linux series, a more in-depth Linux series. And I think we did a single day of Linux here, maybe two days. Uh, but we're gonna do a full foundational Linux series just to kind of help people get their command line skills up and running um and, and you know to help people kind of get good at that uh we'll also be doing a docker series in between there as well uh so there will be stuff there'll be a number of things in between um in between boot camps so you know some you, know, you, can, you can either take a break and wait for the next round or you can hop in for whatever tool that you like or help me struggle through building things that i don't know how to build uh, and i think it'll be pretty fun i know but the, the, I, I told the thunder is is why like, it's very loud and you know it's very loud because I have a, a surprising amount of noise suppression on this microphone. There's so much noise that have, my dog like she like bumps into everything and she like everybody's doing people are doing stuff in the background uh, and and usually I don't think you can hear it but um the thunder is uh it it is thunderous. Um all right so let's get started so that we don't need to stick around for all night we can go relax. Uh, but yeah, we're definitely we're gonna be diving pretty deep into Docker. Um, the, the Kubernetes, there's gonna be a Kubernetes one as well. Um, after we do the Docker piece, um, there's probably gonna be an entire orchestration piece. I probably will move. I probably keep Docker Compose as a part of the Docker uh, little little quick run bootcamp. But uh, there'll probably be a whole orchestration piece for anyone who's interested in some of those things. Is a quarantine project in Python by any chance? Um, so interestingly enough, we haven't even gotten to uh the we haven't gotten into the the pieces that we the only pieces that we finished or that we kind of got you know pretty far on was the back end which is not really much code uh it's 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 a lot of stuff uh to implement to implement something called netlify cms uh which is a really cool way for you to have like a content management system over top of uh github um to kind of get the we're trying to get the data workflow in uh the, the authoring workflow in uh we have not decided anything for the front end i'm actually thinking of doing it with gatsby um but uh, i'm not sure our use case is going to be amazing for gatsby 
um so python can probably be it's gonna be there's probably gonna be a lot of microservices that support this i think doing some things in python would absolutely be feasible and would work for us um but yeah we're gonna we're gonna try to get a mvp off the ground as fast as possible it's not gonna be perfect at first uh and so that's what we were intending on doing we we're actually gonna use a hugo theme to do that uh, which you still might do just to get an mvp off the ground and then actually get someone to design what this is going to look like for us um after we kind of get this a working prototype together and get someone to design it and you know make this actual robust application where people can kind of track their progress and have some fun but yeah so probably using all kinds of different technologies and languages in there but tonight we're gonna be talking about errors you in fact have made a mistake maybe maybe it was you maybe it was the application but a mistake was made along the way and it's probably your fault and so we don't even need to dive into a wikipedia definition of what errors are uh, errors are simply um actions in an application that result uh, in, in uh an incorrect flow of logic uh that generally generally break the application um errors are things that the interpreter or the compiler can't understand properly or cannot process properly and so i think we all kind of have an understanding of, of what an error is we've run into them we've run into our blue screens of death you've run into your uh colorful pinwheel on your mac um and so we've run into many of them so far on the things that we've done <clears throat> so let's find out the different types of errors and we'll hop into code and see some of this so the first one and probably the biggest one is uh is syntax errors these are the ones you'll probably these are the ones you'll probably um, make on your own uh, the most often. And this is a syntax is simply when you do not follow the rules or the structures of a language. And I do like uh, Python's paradigm for errors um, because Python will tell you exactly what you got. So we're gonna dive into a program. I mean, we're gonna dive into create some files and uh, let's see if we can see what these look like. Uh, we're also going to take a look at the errors so that we get comfortable seeing them and we can start uh, understanding how to parse them as we get them. So let's head into decoded and let's make a directory called errors. And I'm going to vim one called syntax.py. And we'll do our best here to uh, simulate this. So maybe um, we want to do. Um, We'll set a variable called X and X is gonna be equal to 50 and Y is gonna be equal to 23. Sure, I just press some buttons. Um, and then we're gonna, we're gonna write some code here. We're gonna say if X is equal to Y, uh, go ahead and print, uh, yay, dumb program. The dumbest program. But uh, if I try to run this, I'm going to get an error. An error will be raised. And it says, hey, file syntax.py on line four. If X is equal to Y, and it shows you a little bit, a little, little bit of carrot there, a little little arrow to show you where it ran into this problem. This is the interpreter telling you where, where it ran into a problem. <clears throat> it's, it gives us a syntax error. And that is what we were just talking about. Let's actually move this down. Uh, uh, actually, is it? No, 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 no. How do I? Okay, there we go. And then this will be all three. And so, yes, yeah, so we just talked about syntax error. And I could full screen this, take this back down. Uh, and the error is basically that we did not follow the rules and the structure of the language. Uh, so whenever you don't, that's when it'll raise a syntax error. So you can be confident that when you do see a syntax error, uh, you know that it's not necessarily an issue with your logic. Uh, it's, it's likely not an issue with your logic at all. It is an issue with the structure and the way that you wrote this code uh, and the language that you're using. So uh, this happened because I simply did not put a colon here. Um, and this will solve our syntax problem. But any way you do this, um, any kind of, if I leave off a, you know, um, if, I, if I, you know, if I were not to put, if I try to do print without putting those um, parentheses around here, but I fix one problem, watch how the syntax error changes here. So 
Uh, same thing, file, syntax.py lets us know exactly what file our issue is happening in. It lets us know exactly what line that it first uh, where, where it encountered this issue. So that's really important. Let's us know right here on line five that when I try to do print, yay, you know, as soon as I got here as the interpreter, I don't know what's going on. And, and sometimes it'll tell you exactly what's missing. Syntax error, missing parentheses and call to print. Did you mean print? Yay, and it'll even give you some options that you can do to fix it. Sometimes this is not always the case with, with syntax errors. And so let's, do this just so we have a running program and we'll run it we get no errors but these numbers are not the same so it did not print yay let's make them the same just so we can see some magic and it says yay now so our program is running properly uh, again, syntax error, again, structure, think structure, think rules of the language. Uh, if you do not follow those things, uh, that is when you will get a syntax error, very common. Uh, and again, it's important to, to know the differences between these types, because once you see that, if you don't know that a syntax error it has to do with the structure, you know, and the rules of the language, you might start to go down the path of checking through all of your logic. And that may be a cumbersome task. Um, your application may have, you know, a number of files that do a lot of different things. Functions are called over and over again, and um, you may waste a lot of your time. So this is the reason why I'm harping a little bit on these uh, types of errors. Every language is not gonna be this nice to you. It's not gonna show you things like this. Um, something like Go, like a like a compiled language. Um, uh, let's, whoops, I never even went into there. So let's go syntax.py, let's move it into errors. Let's see the errors. Let's try one with Go and see what the difference is and how this happens with a compiled language. So then we'll do uh, syntax, another syntax, dot go. All right, and so a syntax error, this will print, uh, you know, let's do a hello world here. This is a hello world program, kind of right out of the box. But what happens here if we, you know, if we mess up this and we remove something like this, uh, where we're not following the rules of print line, we're not calling the print line function what happens if we were to do that and um before i even exit and this is just because of a plugin that i have installed here it's already actually letting me know that there are already errors that are here uh, but i'm going to save it anyway and get out of here because if you don't have those tools you wouldn't know and if i try to do a go run syntax.go i get uh a, i get another i get a syntax error so this is the same type of error uh same thing it says uh, this file, this is the, the name of the file, just like we got up here, the name of the file. This is actually the line number, so line six, and the character that it actually started at. So the 14th character over is when we ran into the syntax error, unexpected literal, and then you can be sure that again, your logic's not wrong, that you have an issue with the structure of the program. Potlicker, five months in a row, can't, tell you how much I appreciate you. Thank you for sticking around for that long learning and chill vibes. Absolutely. Thank you for being a part of the community. You've been a staple. Wouldn't be here without you. Thank you so much. Good to have you. Hope to see you for many, many more months. Um, thank you. So that is a syntax error. And uh, generally, uh, if this was a, if this was a, if we were building the program, like if we were trying to do a go build, uh, these are things that we will run into directly at compile time, which is kind of nice for compiled languages. Um, whereas, you know, this happened during compilation, whereas in Python, because it's interpreted, it actually happened uh, as the pro during runtime, as the program was actually running. Um, even though I know that can be a little bit confusing because of the go run, you know, uh, paradigm here. But syntax error, you know, goes nice. It'll let you know that it is a syntax error as well. Um, and let's do one in JavaScript really quick. Um, Vim syntax dot uh, JS. And the reason why we're gonna do it in all three is again, just because um, I think the more you see errors, errors are scary. Uh, and they take a little bit of time to really understand um, 
you know, to kind of feel what's happening. And once you get comfortable just seeing them and parsing them with your eyes, like the more and more you see, it gets super easy. Uh, and you get so much more comfortable. They get so much less scary. Uh, you know, you're not really worried that you broke anything. So, um, so we'll do the same thing here. We'll do a console.log and we'll just do a hello world. This needs parentheses just like the other two needed. And we'll run this and we will see what happens. So node syntax.js and boom we also get syntax error here and so again these look these look this looks different um than the other ones uh but it does let us know where it's happening the file that it's happening in uh so if you were running an application that again had multiple files using different uh, packages all over the place that you created uh, it would tell you where it happened uh so this is the full path to it and the line that it actually happened on. So don't, uh, you know, it's it's here. Uh, a little more, you know, a, a little more like it's done here. It lets you know the exact line, where it happened, and it lets you know what the syntax error is. Hey, I got an unexpected string here. It does not give me an, an example or, uh, you know, a, uh, it does not tell me what, I, what it thinks I should fix like Python did. Uh, and so different errors will give you different things. But the good thing about these is you can use these errors to simply uh, you can just simply Google them. Uh, and like, I, if you were unsure what to put, um, you can just take a syntax error like this, unexpected string, throw it into Google, and you'll start to run through some options that, that of people telling you, hey, uh, make sure you have, you know, things around your print statements. Make sure you're not missing colons or whatever you need for whatever language. So um, yeah, you, the, the errors are nice because you can simply, uh, you can use them to copy and paste um, and sometimes you gotta re remove, sometimes when you're looking for those things, you might, you gotta remove, uh, the things that are pertinent to your application. So like, hello world is pertinent to our application. So I would copy and paste maybe sent like go syntax error, unexpected literal at end of statement. And I'd get some options and actually we can go and do that. I downloaded pop OS, but my terminals get, doesn't have your colors and layout. Uh, how can you see the branch? Yes. Great. <laughs> great question. What's up, um, IOELMIO? Yep, um, welcome. We are simply learning about how to handle errors and uh, programming languages. Um, yeah, we're just learning about errors and you know what they are, what to do with them, what to do when you see them, and that's all we're doing. Um, uh, but Arco Arcoidas. The problem is I have some substantial modifications made to my uh, to my terminal. You can, uh, I think you can check my terminal settings here um, to kind of get some of that stuff. Uh, I have, we, we did a stream, um, I think it is on YouTube. I'll see if I can find the link um, to show you how to, to walk through how to get set up the same way that I'm set up, um, but all of my configuration items are are in my GitHub. But if you're unsure how to use those things, um, maybe reach out in the uh, Slack and we can help you out a little bit because uh, I do have a number of modifications made to my terminal. So yours will not look like this. Um, but yes, three different languages, three different sets of errors. Generally, it gives you the file. Generally, it gives you the line number, at least that it started at. Uh, and the type of error usually. Now, um, ignore this stuff down here for now. Um, uh, sometimes it's valuable in JavaScript. We don't, we're not harping too much on JavaScript. I don't want to dive in too deep into uh, what what's happening. Um, but like I said, for Go or for any of them, really, you can Google the error like this. I can take it. And I can go up here. And I can say, I have no idea what's happening in this program. And I'm gonna take out the little part that's specific to me. And I'm gonna say, I'm gonna put Golang in the front just cause uh, I think that'll help. Um, and then I'll get some options. Now, maybe I'll find my answer, maybe I won't, but I'll get a lot of options. And you'd be surprised at how much you learn um, when you start to go through these things. It does, it can be overwhelming at first, um, especially when your eyes can't parse out, like you haven't seen, you're not super comfortable with the language yet and you're like hey like do i really have to read through all of this to understand even what's being asked and yes you probably do in the beginning and it is it is frustrating uh but it is a good way to find the answers that you need <clears throat> yes this is programming in general um so this is just 
concepts that apply kind of across the board. So that's a syntax error when you're worried about your rules and structures of the language. So boom, now let's head to over to exceptions. Exceptions are a little bit different. Uh, you've probably seen inside of the um, the exorcism stuff that they, they, they generally tell you a bunch of times like, hey, you may need to raise an exception here. Um, I think it's in their default, like read me um, about these things, but exceptions are syntactically correct. So the rules and the structures of the program are intact, uh, but errors occur during execution. So uh, exceptions, these are where you have uh, likely have issues with your logic um, or the way that you've written your code. Um, yeah, and so we can write, uh, let's see if we can write something that has an exception really quick. Um, in Python. So again, syntactically correct, so it'll run fine. Nothing wrong with the structure, um, but if there is something wrong with what you are, uh, the, probably the logic of your application. So exceptions.py. And hmm, this might look something like, um, uh, maybe something like X equals false. I thought of him. Hey, we're always, we're always, we're not always vimping around here, but uh, when we're just, we're just kind of hopping in and doing quick things. We're we are using Vim for a lot of things. I, you know, I use Vim for a lot of stuff. Most of my stuff. Um, I'm trying to do. I'm going to be using it more and more. I'm, I'm going to make it a little more user friendly. There's some things in Vim that I'm going to use to make it a little more user friendly. I'm also, I also might add a key, a little, a little key logger in the bottom right, uh, so people can see what I'm doing. Uh, I find them to be overwhelming when they're the one that Linux has by default that kind of spans across the bottom. Um, but yes, it's, it's kind of weird. Not only logic errors, but you could data input errors, type of number, user rights, ABC. Uh, yes. Um, yes. So just to dive a little farther, um, that, that is true. Um, in, in certain languages, something like that, uh, would, could give you other types of exceptions. So these exceptions are kind of the, the blanket statement for kind of what, what these are. Um, you can raise these at any given time. Um, but yes, it's, that, that could absolutely be an ex exception. That one in particular, um, you know, a bad argument to something. It could be a value error. And again, you kind of have some choice there. Um, different languages are going to interpret it a little bit differently as well. Um, but yeah, that, that could be one too. Um, and you could raise that yourself. I'm trying to think of a default case where Python would would uh, would give you um, an exception by default. That's not like a, one of the other ones, but maybe it's easier to just go through be because we'll be handling the exceptions and we'll be able to provide some specifics. Maybe let's go through them really quick and then we can try to get some cases done for them. And maybe one will come out of that, but that's a, that's a general exception. That's what, that's what it is. Um, usually, uh, especially Python is going to raise, uh, a specific type of exception. Uh, most languages have, uh, you know, different classes of errors that help you one, understand the problem and uh, to be able to troubleshoot it. But type errors, type errors are one type of exception. This is raised when a function or operation uh, is applied to an object of an incorrect type. So a type error might be something like this. And maybe we'll put, uh, maybe, we'll, maybe we'll use this entire file for exceptions and we'll make some functions. So we're gonna call this uh, def, um, type error examples, and it's not going to take in anything. It's simply going to run this and this is, whoops, type error. Let's say you try to do something like print, um, three divided by yes you try to do something like this um trying to divide a number by a string um and let's call this function down here 
what is this called? Type error. Let's call it. And let's see what happens when we run this. And that is the first one that we get. And so this error uh, gives you a little bit more, um, there's more output here. This output is a little bit more verbose than the syntax one. Uh, it lets us know where it happened at um, as well, still uh, line five, uh, but I ran it inside of a function. So then it, it tells me, hey, it actually, when I was executing, it was actually in line two where I kind of kicked this code off. Uh, and this is where I'm running into the thing. And I get this exception here, type error, unsupported operand, uh, types for uh, for division integer and a string can't divide an integer by a string So this is the error that you, again that you get whenever you try to um, perform an operation um, With incorrect types uh, or against incompatible types is when you will receive that type error um, And again, this could be there because tons of ways to trigger this We've triggered this lots and lots of times and again These are things that are very specific to not being able to work because of those types um, can we put a little, let's put a little more verbosity, verbosity in here. Uh, let's print, uh, actually print. Well, it doesn't, it's going to get confusing anyway. If we can print like this is a, this will. Now nah, let's, let's just put it as a comment because the output will be disgusting anyway. Um, this will produce a type error. All right. Um, we'll see that. Let's see it in other languages as well. Exception dot go. Um, we can do the same thing. Notice it didn't give me all of my, um, my boilerplate code. That's because there's already a main package file in here, uh, which is unfortunate. And so we need to import Funct and we need to funk main. All right. And in here, we'll try to do the same thing. We'll do format dot print line and we will try to format that print line three divided by yes, exact same code. And we'll see what we get here. Go run exceptions dot go. And there we go. So we get a, we get a different, uh, we don't get the same type error. So I put a type error because we're gonna, because we're focusing on Python here. Mo these exceptions are specific to Python, um, but I wanted to give you something to anchor against and see what this looked like um, in other types. This one gives you an invalid operation error, uh, but it is an exception. Remember these all fall under exceptions um, and so, exceptions.go um, gives you this uh, invalid operation three divided by yes, Mitch mismatch types. The same thing uh, that the, the error itself, the actual explanation of the error itself is actually quite similar than it was above here. Uh, unsupported operand uh, for types, uh, int and string. Same thing is what we got down here. Mismatch types, untyped int and untyped string. Uh, so it is, uh, it's the same. Um, so I'll give you that and let's do it with JavaScript as well. Actually, let's, let's go back into here. And let's do the same thing. So we, um, now we'll leave it like that. We'll leave it like that for now. And let's do an exceptions. Jones.js. Console.log and we will do four uh, or three divided by yes. Again, try to keep it as the same. So weird options, you know, something that you would never want to do. And knowing JavaScript, this might work for some reason, but you know, um, whoops. Hold on, is that, is that an actual file? What, did I spell exceptions wrong? Ah, I did, except, ah, there we go. Okay, and so here, um, instead of giving me an error, and like I said, JavaScript's probably gonna work a little bit a little bit differently. This is why it's always fun to, it's always interesting to see what's gonna happen with JavaScript. JavaScript actually does not give me an error here. 
this is not an error um this stands for not a number so basically it went ahead and it attempted to um modify or it attempted to do the action which we put here and when it failed basically um it basically says hey i tried it i could not get a reasonable number here uh so i don't really know what that is so i got a not a number error there's some other ways we can raise some exceptions like this but wanted to make each of those scenarios the same to see how they're handled differently but yeah so you get not a number it printed that out just fine not an error so clear all that stuff up top uh to make it too confusing and maybe i should rename this file so it's actually correct move exceptions to except shones except shones not js all right any questions so far about either syntax errors or the first type of exceptions which is uh that we're going over is kind of the type error um, and i also think the python exceptions are really good uh to kind of go off of because it can it gives you some guidance on the types of things that you run into in whatever language with very specific naming conventions all right so the next thing is the name error the name exception uh so this was thrown when an object cannot be found and we've seen this before as well this is what we'll see when we have not created a variable when we're calling a function we haven't created when we're calling something incorrectly um this error usually indicates uh one of a few things one uh it can be uh when you have you know if, if you believe it's supposed to be a variable or a function that's you know that's supposed to be there and you're getting a name error uh we're gonna see what it looks like but it could be because you uh, have declared it in the wrong place the wrong order you're calling it before it actually is instantiated uh it could be because you made a typo um so check for typos it could be if uh, for functions it could be that you did not um put the put the parentheses behind it so that it seems like it's actually calling a variable instead so let's see what that looks like ah uh, yes the name error is always i mean the, the that gif is always good i've used it before i really like it um so let's go back into exceptions.py and let's create a new one here and let's say def um name error example and that might be something like this simply where you know maybe i said um maybe i said my name was aaron you know set up a nice little variable here and then maybe i tried to print out uh i misspelled it you know i misspelled a lot of things yeah maybe i do this uh we, we can do this in a million different ways which we're, we're gonna do it in a bunch of different ways uh here but let's see what this looks like when I call a name error example. Name error example. And we run this. When we run that, we get that name error. And it says, hey, on the, in this file, when you call name error example, that function uh, on line eight um, in, in name error example, uh, when you said print NMAE, it says, hey, name nmae is not defined it absolutely is not defined i'm referencing something that we never call it and again it's because i misspelled it so that's one of the options that's one of the things that may happen um but let's say we corrected this and we run this you know we got and it prints out aaron but maybe when we went to go call it i you know left examples onto the end here and so now uh the function name is name error example but the function I'm calling is name error examples and we run it and we run it like this. We get, Hey, name error, name, name error examples is not defined. So again, you'll get this, uh, for functions. You'll get this for uh, variables. So one, be wary of spelling. When this happens, it's a common use case is that you spell something wrong. So go back and check your spelling. Um, after you check your spelling and you think everything's good, look at your scoping. 
uh, scoping is pretty important here make sure you are declaring the things that you need make sure they're being declared and they're being uh, created in a space that's before where your error is being raised a lot of times that's the problem as well um yeah and 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 just scoping just making sure something has access sometimes um you're declaring things in the right order but because of the way that your scope is uh the way you scoped out these things uh where you are in the program does not have access to whatever variable or whatever item that it needs so be wary of that but name error something it doesn't exist you're calling on something you're calling something by name and it doesn't exist and python or whatever language has no idea what to do with it let's see what that looks like in these other languages oops including go and so we'll do you know same exact thing just to make it the same but name equals aaron and print out in m-a-e it's, it's surprisingly hard to spell name wrong on purpose but it's really easy to do when you're trying to type fast which is interesting so we'll do go run exceptions.go and we get an exception here just as we expected um it says undefined in m-a-e so it's basically saying hey this this variable that you gave me this thing that you gave me name or nmae is undefined we'll do the exact same thing that we did before by correcting this and we will um actually let's do it how we did it up here let's create a new function funk uh we'll call it error test and won't take anything and it will again format that print line whatever we want uh write this thing and here we will call this function and we'll say all right call on error test um but i'm gonna call it just like this maybe i forgot to put on the parentheses at the end and i try to run this and we get um a couple different things here um we get multiple exceptions we get uh two undefines for name uh tells us which lines is happening on and we also get um this one air test evaluated but not used again um this is because we kind of called we kind of set this up like we were setting up a variable doesn't really know what to do with it but maybe we do call call it with aaron maybe we spelled it wrong maybe we did aaron test instead of aaron test and let's see what kind of error this looks like and go and again same thing um here we just get the undefined value basically for whatever thing we were trying to do so pretty simple there um and let's do the last one for exceptions.js and uh function the uh, same thing here uh let's just make this function here and let's call error test but let's do the whole name thing so this is javascript so i gotta use let or var actually undo let me practice let me practice proper uh let me practice, whoa. Let me practice proper Vim stuff. I'm really trying to get out of the bad habits that I'm doing. Uh, delete inside parentheses. All right, name, nm, yeah, there we go. And name. All right, so we've written the exact same code in a few different ways so i have a function here called error test it's going to set the the variable name 
set it equal to this value and I'm gonna print it out, but I spelled it wrong, uh, which the name error would produce. And uh, this would raise the exception of a name error in Python, but let's see what it does inside of JavaScript. We'll try to do this. And we get the, we get something very similar reference error. Um, so not a name error as we got before, but it's basically saying this thing is not defined. It looks a little bit more like go, uh, where the thing that it's referencing is saying, Hey, this is not a, this is not, this doesn't exist. I don't know what this is. Uh, I'm sure you're trying to use it properly, but I don't know what it is. So let's spell it right. And let's see if we get the same error. If we spell the function name wrong. So now we got the function name spell improper, but the console.log is probably right. We run it again and we get uh, another reference error again. We are referencing a variable. We are referencing a function. We're trying to use something by name that does not exist. It is not defined and I fail. So that's what that looks like in JavaScript and let's just fix it really quick. And now this will run properly. Okay. So that is name error. Does anyone have any questions specifically about name errors? Again, the concepts for errors, the, the different pieces are all relatively simple. Uh, nothing's all that crazy. Um, there's, I think there's still one or two more. Uh, yeah, but um, any questions so far about this? That's why we have strong type languages, 100%. Uh, I agree. Um, yes, I 100% agree with you. Uh, and so errors like this, Name error, what, if we had a giant, um, just to contextualize some of the differences between those statically typed languages and those dynamically typed languages, uh, if we had something like this in a Python program, there's a chance that you write this entire Python program, there's a chance that you go to run it, um, you make some changes, you go to run it, um, it runs, maybe it's doing some type of big job and it's processing, it's processing, it's doing some stuff. Uh, and then, you know, after a long time, it gets to the point where you actually implemented this error uh, and it will not notice that that thing is a problem until it gets to this point. And when we get to the point like this, when it raises these exceptions by default, when you hit these default exceptions, it stops the program, which can be problematic. Um, those those uh, statically typed languages, uh, those, those compiled languages like uh, Python, I mean like Go, will find these things before you're ever running them. So. Um, so it'll save you. It can it can save you a little bit of heartache. It can save you a little bit of pain uh, For you know, not properly testing or, or missing something like this uh, It go will find it, you know, static statically type languages uh, Will find it pretty fast before you even get to go run the code, which is kind of nice One thing we need is spell correcting languages for my fat fingers, but B bites back Thank you. I'm glad there are other people like me. Uh, the, the suggestion last time by um, by uh, who I was trying to remember who gave me the suggestion, but um, I think it was by Blah. You know, the, our famous uh, team troll Blah Seven uh, told me that we should start typing our all of our code inside of Microsoft Word because I wanted spell check, and I was like, hey, you know what? That's not the worst idea. Um, the only problem is then. You're gonna have to deal with like spell check. If you could write a spell checker, which you can, if you can write a spell checker, but ignore uh, variable declarations and I'm uh, not variable declaration, variable and function declarations, I think you'll be fine. We could try it out. I like ETO Power. Hey, you know, ET is the he's ET is the man. I listen to ET every, all the time. You know, he's super inspirational. Got to have one of the most inspirational speeches on YouTube. So we'll hop into ET slide right now, value, value error. I, I love that I was able to find a gift with ET. If anyone doesn't know uh, about ET, the hip hop preacher, he is uh, he's a motivational speaker. So if you're into that, that type of thing, if you're ever looking for any type of motivation, if you're ever looking for someone to help you uh, become your better self, um, you can go uh, watch him on YouTube. It's, uh, he's got podcasts and stuff as well. But you know, a lot of, lot of passion, you know, good, good speaker, uh, gets me hyped sometimes. I listen to him on my bike rides. Um, yeah, what, one day people, a couple people have asked me about it. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll let people know my, uh, my motivational regimen. Um, I pulled off from it a bit cause I'm trying to gain discipline, uh, to where I don't need quite as much motivation, but you, I, I think you have to use, you know, motivation to get there, whatever works for you, everything different stuff works for everybody. 
uh, but I have a couple people I listen to. I have a, you know, a structure behind the, the things that I do that I listen to to try to help, you know, cause uh, your boy needs some motivation. Your boy needs, <laughs> I, I, I've, I've had to actively get motivated to do, there's so many things I don't want to do. Uh, I mostly just want to sit around playing video games and eating, uh, you know, I would have just said Twinkies because that's the de facto default item that like is fat. Um, but I think Twinkies are actually kind of gross. Uh, so maybe I'm not that fat, uh, but I would love to be eating honey buns and pizza and playing video games all day, you know, every single day, even though I like to, I, I like to find success in other parts of my life, but you know, I like to do what's comfortable and what's comfortable is playing video games and eating Twinkies and you know drinking soda and all that fun stuff so i gotta listen to people like et the hip-hop preacher to tell me how trash i am and to get off my butt and to be be a little bit better than terrible that's all les brown's amazing uh for sure i love i love les brown uh definitely some really great stuff and I, oh spell checker that understands camel case i i wonder just as a fun so I wonder how far we could get. I mean, I'm sure someone has already started to try to do this. I'm sure there's stuff out there, but like all of the different cases um, that you would have to take into account when trying to apply spell checker to coding would be massively difficult, uh, but it might be fun. We should look at the anagrams of the most occurred. <laughs> sure. Yes, 100%. But back to ET value errors. Uh, these errors are thrown, these exceptions are raised when a function's argument um, is of an uh, inappropriate type. So a couple words there, and again, this is specifically, this value error again is specifically for Python. I pulled these types from Python um, just because again, there's so many different ways that each language handles certain errors. I wanted us to be able to anchor around one of them and value errors when an argument, a function's argument, very key there, a function's argument is of an inappropriate type. And so where would that happen? That would happen when you do something like this. Um, value error example. Come on. Okay, and that might be something where you take in Let's say we're gonna take in two numbers and add them together. So maybe we, uh, or we're gonna, whatever, we'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll take in two things. So we're gonna take in an X and we're gonna take in Y, two different things. Um, and maybe we'll try to, um, again, maybe we'll try to, to modulo them or something. And so we're gonna say, hey, go ahead and return X mod Y and see what you get. And then down here, we're going to call that. So I'm gonna call value error. Oops, escape, escape. Escape, what's happening here? Uh, I, nope, I'll see, I was already insert. Um, what's that, value error. I'm gonna pass in four, and I'm gonna pass in test. And so I have two different things. I'm trying to perform an arithmetic operator against these two things, but I'm, I'm not passing in two numbers. I you can't really do arithmetic against two separate things. Um, so let's see what happens when we do this. Yes, you know, got, got to vim it up. You have to. Um, and so let's see what happens when we run this. And when we run it, Oh, we actually got a type error here and not a value error. Unsupported operand. So um, let me actually see you. Let me, let, me think, let me think of where I can get this. So unsupported type. So we got we got what we got before, which makes sense. I tried to do modulo against an integer and a string. Um, this value error, value error. How can I create a value error? Um, this argument is of an inappropriate type. What if I do... What if we do, I wonder what happens really quick if we do too many arguments or not enough. Let's see, let's see, trying this out. And I'll still type too many. Um, huh, I don't know. I'm trying to think of an example where I could raise, where I could raise a value 
error. Where could I raise a value error? Let's see. It's probably a good thing, you know. I haven't made I haven't made enough mistakes in my career yet to know exactly how to raise a value error. Python value error. Let's see. I could raise it myself. I could absolutely raise it myself. We're gonna get to raising errors ourselves in a little bit. Um, but I'm trying to create one by default because this is a built-in, I'm pretty sure this is a built-in error type. Um, uh, let's see, let's see if it gives me a, an example. Argument has the right type, but an inappropriate value. The right type, but an inappropriate value. Hmm. <laughs> ah, hello. Uh, once again, uh, Simulios. Welcome to the channel. Thank you so much for the 24 party raid. Welcome everyone. Come on in. How's everyone doing tonight? We're doing great. We are in the second to last, um, the second to last session of, Ma of this session of Mastermind Academy of Decoded introduction to software development and computer science uh, and we're learning a little bit about errors and we're trying to you know learning a little bit how, about what errors look like um how to handle them um you know so that when we're coding and we see these things we're not afraid of them um and right now we're trying to see how we can uh raise a value error um our you know without having to do it manually i wanted to think of a scenario in which a value error would be raised um in in python specifically um the situation is not just so interesting. They put this here at the end here for value error and saying that, hey, I'm gonna like, this may be the situation, but if the situation is described basically by a more precise error, like an index error, like a type error, then uh, then I will do that instead. Um, so that might be why it's difficult to do this. I'll see if I can find an example a little bit later, uh, but let's keep going to learn about how to raise errors. We can raise our own value error. Uh, I have gotten them for sure. Um, so uh, maybe we can, maybe maybe something will come to us while we're going ahead and doing this. Linux underscore, 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 errors are afraid of me. Uh, good, that is how I want errors to be with me. I want them to be petrified of me because I was petrified of them for so long, um, but I'm no longer afraid of errors. So we got a bunch of different types of errors. And as you saw here, Python has a bunch of built-in exceptions, more than just the ones that I raised. Look at all these, there are, are, are a bunch of them. I want to give you some of the most common types of errors um, that we would see. Um, I wonder if this value error, let's see what the value error in, in the way it's described. Let's see what that looks like for Go, because I feel like that's going to give us something that we like. Um, I thought it was going to give us something interesting. And so if we're supposed to take name, which is a string. This probably gonna give us a type error actually. So that makes sense. Um, yeah, let's do that. Let's try this, which is a string, but I passed in a five. Um, let's see what happens. I think, I don't think this is gonna work. I think it's gonna give us a, a one of those. Um, it's gonna give us a type error, I believe, but let's see. Uh, go run exceptions dot go and we get the same thing like we got with the name error uh which is like undefined oh wait actually let's fix it all right so we, yeah we get that we get the type error here cannot type i uh, can't use five as a type uh string an argument error test so we get that we get the typed error there instead of the value there um, what's good not sir? G good to have you. Welcome. Welcome. Welcome You should take a look at the beam uh, Erlang elixir with fault tolerance and the mantra. Let it crash. Whoa Um, so I've heard good things about elixir and Erlang. I've heard a lot of interesting things about Erlang that I did not know I did not know Erlang was as old as it was. I also didn't know Erlang is um, as uh, Robust as it is in its use case. It's pretty interesting. Um, yeah, let it crash. Uh, sure, I'm cool with that. So the concept I play here is that everything is a process. Uh, so it's a process where you can just let it crash and restart a new process. That means your app usually can never go down. That's interesting. That's very interesting. My my que my question is, I understand that concept. Is should like is that okay? Um, it feels like app crashes to me as someone who 
manages infrastructure. Uh, it feels like app crashes uh, should be caught. Um, they, they shouldn't, a new process maybe shouldn't be spawned all the time, but hey, you never know. Mass square root one is a value error in Python. Oh, cool. Um, let's do that. I like that. Vim. Uh, Vim. What, what file? Exceptions.go. Um, what's up, uh, Buang ZZZ? What's up, Dizzle? What's up, uh, that's, a, that's everybody now. Discord used Elixir and Rust. Yes, they, they just switched to Rust recently. They caused quite a stir uh, with their article about switching to Rust over from Go. Uh, pretty interesting thing that they wrote there. Um, basically, uh, they got everyone all in a tizzy because they wrote an article about, you know, their, their triumphs about switching from Go to Rust. Um, you know, their entire back end for the things that they're doing. Um, when, they, again, they were using a bit of an older version of Go. A lot of their issues would probably have been solved by upgrading to a newer version of Go. Um, but, you know, everyone has their, you know, their allegiances and people didn't like that. There are a number of reasons why they did not go with an upgraded version of Go, but it was, it was a pretty interesting article. Um, it was a pretty interesting article. I've seen some pretty interesting breakdowns of it as well, um, but it's pretty cool. What's up, uh, Silex? Uh, thank you so much, Linux underscore, 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 underscore for the follow. Good to have you. Uh, let's go ahead and get this. Uh, whoops. Let's go ahead and get this Python file. I, I want to see this math at square root. Uh, I got to import math, right? I believe I must import math to do math that square root. And let's do value error and let's do uh, is, can I do, can I do capital? Is it, I feel like it's supposed to be math dot S Q R T two. That seems like it'll, let me not take anything. Delete inside parentheses. Also delete inside parentheses. Let's run this. I got an attribute error here. Math has no attribute. Um, let me try capital M. I don't know. I never remember how to import things in Python properly and how to use them properly. I got a name error. Math is not defined. All right, we'll mess with it a little bit later. Um, math has no square root two. Well, so, or did you mean square root of two? Because square root two is not a function of that. And then that actually works. Square root negative one. Okay. Let's try that. Ah, there we go. We finally got ourselves a default value error where math domain error. That's what we got. Um, we got, we got a math domain error. Uh, you can't do this. Uh, been a while since I mathed effectively, but I don't think you can do the square root of a negative number or specifically, I don't know if it's specifically negative one. I don't know. I have calculators for that now. And first off, let me just say this. As an adult, the only negative number you ever need to worry about is the amount of money that's in your bank account. And you never have to do any square roots on those. So, uh, you know, it is not important that we know these things, okay? It's not important at all, you know? Um, let's see. So we got that value error. What else are we talking about? Uh, what's up, Cynical? Cynical2493, good to have you. Welcome to the channel. So glad to have you following. All right, so that's a value error. Again, that's just a couple of the types here. There are tons of errors in each language, uh, all that are pretty descriptive, but these are just some of the more common ones that you are going to run into. Now, we know for a fact that we can receive errors. We know uh, that errors are a thing, but we can do something about it. We didn't, we're not, you know, we're not subject to the failures of our application. Uh, we can handle these errors. We can keep our program running, even if we run into an error. So why would you want to do that? Every error um, should not break your application. There are situations in which receiving an error, um, you know, doesn't need to break your application. So we can handle that. So by handling that error um, or exception handling, so we can keep things running, uh, we can, you know, um, account for those errors and the logic of our program. 
we do this in python specifically um javascript as well um a couple different ways but you do this by trying to run the code uh so if you ever want to handle an error uh, you gotta if you want to this is specifically for python and javascript or for uh, generally for static i mean for dynamically typed languages interpreted languages you try to run the code and if we get an error so we try to run it if we get an error we can tell python or javascript or whatever language uh the actions we would like to take in that case so kind of like an if statement uh that's that's checking to see if something can run properly or not so you try to run a piece of code it it, it, it executes that code if it receives some type of exception back then we can de uh, determine what to do with that and the last the very last piece of that is raising an exception so actually first let's let's do just this part here so let's go let's create new files here um so we don't have too much going on uh and we'll call this error underscore handling dot py and here's what we're gonna do we're gonna say um we're gonna try to do something and so um that's what we set up top here we said we do this by trying to run the code, doing our best to run the code. And there's actually a keyword here that is try. Uh, but actually, let's, let's do it in a function just so um, we're practicing doing more stuff. So def, um, we're gonna call this attempt. We're gonna call this attempt. Um, and we're gonna say attempt. Attempt is gonna take in two items, X and Y. And this is going to attempt to, um, to Let's, let's keep the same spirit of things going. We're gonna try to do modulo against these things. So uh, we're gonna try. So try is a keyword here. See how it turns red? And we're gonna say try to do this. So try to do, try to do, uh, try to print X mod Y. So try to do this. Do your best to do this. Um, and let's actually run this by itself really quick. Let's try to run it. and we are going to actually let's not do print let's try to return it uh no let's try to print it we'll see it there for now but we're gonna try to attempt to do that with five and we're gonna try to do it with two uh five comma two and we're gonna try to you know let's, let's see what happens when we run this and we can say python three uh air handling py and oh we got a, we got a different error we have not seen this error before um tonight but we got an indentation error okay so what it said is um ah so this is not complete i thought try would work by itself didn't know that about python you know i never i never really wanted to do it but i'm just saying you know uh, i got an indentation error here and that's because this is not complete uh after you try um it's like an if statement so this is like your if statement up here say hey go ahead if this works go ahead and do something, but uh, like just do that thing. But if it doesn't work, go ahead and accept. Um, and so this says, basically it's an if and an else. It says, hey, go ahead and do something. So right here I can say, print didn't work. This didn't work. All right, so I kind of got my little if else here. Um, kinda, you know, um, let's pull this back over. And let's try this out again. And we get it and we get a one. All right, we got a one. So it looks like that worked that, that we, we did not get this down here. So I tried to run this code and it gave us one. And if you do five mod two, uh, you know, two goes into five twice, that equals four. There's one left over. So we get one left. So this does work. But if we do five mod, five mod two, the string of two, let's see what happens now and we get a this didn't work okay so we 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 ran the exception or the accept block instead of the try block and so again that is actually the block that runs when you do in fact run into an error um and so this is just to show you that um yeah so again this accept block will run when there is an error you can take action accordingly um but it did not raise an error in our code. As far as our um, system knows, this program ran successfully. 
uh, the error code that will be returned by this would would be a successful error code. I mean, status code, uh, you know, said, hey, if this exit code is perfect, you know, we're good to go. This script ran successfully, which may not be a good thing um, or maybe a good thing. Maybe you do want to go ahead and do something else um, so you can kind of take action based on whether or not this code runs or not. Um, if we were to not do this in a try catch block. So let's actually just take Slink yank that and let's do B I and oh, and let's just do if we just do the X mod Y, this will in fact result in an error. So the, the thing that we're trying to do right here, this will in fact result in an error just to confirm what we're doing. And we do that and we do get an error. So we know. Um, look how different that is. We we ran it this way. We actually got an error, but when we are not, uh, when we're doing it with a try accept. So I know how to, <laughs> I know how to block, uh, I know how to block um, comment using Vim, but I do not know how to block uncomment using Vim. If anyone knows how to block uncomment using Vim, I could just Google it, but let me know um, because I don't know how to do it. <laughs> um, why is this? Okay. Um, but yeah, so it'll allow you to do exactly that. Now that allows your program to keep running. No big deal. Um, and to show you that it's going to keep running is I can do another like print statement down here. Like after that runs, see this program keeps running after the error. Just so if, if this was causing an error, uh, it would not run this line. So it would attempt to run this, which would, you know, call this function here. It would run into an error uh, and then it would stop, but it's actually going to keep going and it's going to run this as well because we handled it. We handled that error. See, this didn't work. See, this program keeps running uh, after the error. We caught that exception basically, and we were able to continue running. Um, I've never been a fan of strict indentation and languages. Yeah. Um, yes. I mean, Python is purely, you know, it's a language that cares about white space. So you got to do what you got to do. What's up camcorder. I like the name. Uh, we are simply, um, going over, uh, handling errors in programming. That's all. We're just learning how to handle errors properly while we're programming. Attempt to, uh, print a string, attempting to print a string. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You can use the Vim plugin, Vim commentary, and hit GCC to toggle comments. Ah, okay, okay, okay. I will try to implement that a little bit later. I'm trying to, I didn't want to one felt like, so here's a problem. I spent a single day when I decided I was gonna go all in on Vim. I spent a single day trying to get every single tool in place that would help me do all the things that I wanted to do. That was massively overwhelming. I knew how to use Vim. Uh, I knew how to do basic editing with Vim um, at the time, and you know, so I could hop into an application and get around fairly well, and you know, edit what I needed to edit. But um, I was not super efficient at it. And I was like, all right, I need to get all the cool stuff. I need to get nurture. I need to get you know my windows splits and all the other stuff. Um, and it was overwhelming. I didn't know how to use any of it, so I pulled everything out, and I've been slowly adding things back into my VimRC as I've, you know, needed to use them. So I will definitely grab Vim commentary and uh, let's see, let me pull that up. Pull up in a tab over to the side, just so I remember. All right, got it. Thank you, I'll try that out. But um, yes, so now that we can catch the error uh, and, and handle it per se, uh, that's great. You know, it, it's nice that we can make some decisions based on that. But um, there are also times when we want to raise an exception. So when we want to, we're writing some code and, you know, if some logic or something happens and we want to say, hey, this shouldn't be allowed to happen. This is something that we need to know about. We need to report back. We need to exit this application. Uh, you can raise an exception. So uh, you can use Python to throw an error for any situation that you define using the raise keyword. Um, and so we can hop into that in a second, but first just want to show you what, uh, try and accepts look like in other languages. Um, 
go doesn't uh does this paradigm does not uh, happen in go i'll show you the paradigm in go in a little bit uh but let's do it in javascript first hair handling um, dot go uh dot js okay and in javascript um actually i don't remember what we did over here in py actually so let's see so we can copy it real quick um do the same thing so let's do function uh attempt function attempt takes in two things an x and a y uh, and that uh, and so i think in javascript i think try is the first one i believe that's first uh, i think you try and i think when you try i can do console.log um x mod y now the problem is this is not going to be an error in javascript which is interesting but we'll try this and we'll, we'll, we'll try it out we'll figure out what it is and i think the way that you do it is i think you catch it i think you catch things in javascript um print this did and we'll, we'll look it up um in a second I don't know the try catch syntax. Um, I think this is the syntax. We'll try it out. And we'll close this function and we'll call attempt again down here. And we'll call it with five and we'll call it with two uh, first and see what happens. Whoa, my phone's listening to me. Um, node error handling uh, JS. And we get the one because it does in fact work. Um, but when we change it from this to this, this will still work because it is JavaScript and JavaScript is super weird. Uh, we did mod on a, um, you know, on an integer and on a string and it worked because it interpreted as such. We'll change that in a second to make that work. What's up AI chatbot? Welcome. You, uh, you know, I, I hope you're a real chatbot. That would be pretty cool if you were a chatbot. What's up, uh, Ledevpole? <laughs> or is it Ledevpole? Or is it Ledevpole? Or is it Ledevpole? You know, it could be any of those. I think it's Ledevpole. I'm gonna go with that for now. Welcome to the channel. Good to see you, hello. Um, Let's see. Let's try to do plus true instead of five. Hmm, change colors for me. I don't know. I think in JavaScript, I think it's capital T. And we get a reference error, um, which should be fine. True is not defined. So lowercase. Jeff got swag. Yes, you do, Jeff. You got swag, man. Thank you for thank you for hopping in. Thank you for thank you for the follow. The Rod Man. Thank you so much for the follow. Mantis Maestro. Good to have you. Good to see you. You are from France, indeed. Ah, the first one. I don't remember what the first one. I think I think I think I said Le Dev Pole. I think that's what I said for the first one. If that's it, welcome. Thank you. Good to have you. Um, good to have you here. And no, okay. Maybe I need to do something a little bit better um than this because javascript is not going to uh it's not gonna do these things for me maybe we can just do this we can do something like that really won't work um well, let's do uh, 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 uh what won't what 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 won't work in JavaScript? Very problematic here. Um, I just want to get an error. Um, what happens if I try to divide by zero? What if I try to do like four divided by zero? Can I do that? I don't know. Wait, wait, wait. What'd that say? I didn't read that error. Print is not defined. Oh yeah, that makes sense. Ah, see, but Oh, okay, hold on, hold on. This might work actually. This might work. Calling something that doesn't work at all might be the best option. Uh, print is not something that JavaScript has, obviously. Uh, I'm just dumb and I keep doing that. And 
I did raise an error. Uh, why? Because print does not work. Print is not defined. It's not something in JavaScript. Uh, and so if I try to print something, um, it's gonna give me an error. And it did give me an error before, but that's because I was using print here as well. When I properly do this, I do get this here. So I caught the error. My program exits uh, gracefully. It, like this doesn't cause it to exit. It actually continues to run, uh, but it does not raise any type of exceptions because I caught that. But we just saw that you can actually raise an exception. Uh, and so that is what we wanna do. Um, because again, there's gonna be parts of your program. There's gonna be logic that happens in your application where you say, hey, if this thing doesn't happen, that means something's catastrophically wrong. Uh, and we need to go ahead and stop this. We need to tell the world what's happening. And so let's see how we do that in Python. All right. And the way that we do that is simply using the raise keyword. So we simply raise that exception, raise. Um, and then I think we can do it in different, um, we can, we can raise any of the types um, that we talked about, value errors, name errors. Um, I wanna say you do it like this. I always, again, I never remember syntax, uh, no matter how many times I do something, but I think you do it something like this. Like if I wanna raise a value error, I think I can do this and say, hey, this value is wrong. But you shouldn't do something like this. You need to be as descriptive as possible. This is your opportunity to help yourself out, uh, to help the people out who are troubleshooting this program. Um, and let's see if this actually raises an error. And check this out. Um, uh, it does in fact run into the error during handling of the above exception. Another exception occurred. So we actually got two different errors here, uh, but it gives you, uh, it, it responds with the actual problems. And it does, this is file. Um, this is the file, the line that I was on, and it says value error. Uh, hey, this is a, this value is wrong. And it raised, in fact, the value error that we created. Hey, this value is wrong. The type of error is value error. And so you have now flexibility over the things that you can do. Uh, we can kind of keep it simple like we did last time and or with JavaScript and do it uh, like this. What's up? Uh, Z at SK, welcome to the channel. Good to have you. And do something like this, maybe a console dialog this instead. A true error. The truest of errors, something that doesn't even exist. And again, we get the same thing. Name error up here first, console is not defined, but in fact, we do get this value error down here, which allows us to have the flexibility over what, um, over what gets said. Uh, exception is the inverse of inception. Ah, ah, X versus N. They are opposites. You know, I, I'm going with it. I'm going with everything that, uh, you know, I, last night, I don't know if you all were here, but, uh, I learned a lot about, uh, uh, bits and bytes and orbits and orbites. Uh, if anyone didn't know, you know, uh, or orbit is when something is, you know, uh, is when a moon is when it's when it's revolving around a moon but orbit I mean, or bites are around the solar i don't know all right i tried to lie to you i tried to troll you in the same way that i was trolled but i didn't even get it right i need to go back and see but i thought it was pretty funny got trolled last night uh as usual um so yes exception is the inverse of inception uh, but it actually might be you can also raise without type to rethrow the original exceptions, correct. Um, that is very true. You can simply uh, delete to the end of line like that. Yeah, there we go. And uh, this is the original error that will come through. So basically what you're saying is, hey, try to run this code. Uh, but if, um, you know, if we should re re like receive an error, go ahead and simply raise the error that you received. Um, so the raise keyword is nice, um, specifically in Python. Um, and that, again, that's different in a lot of the other places like Go. Um, we can do something in Go really quick. Go works a little bit differently. Um, go, go error is, is kind of like the error uh, as a variable, it gets caught in, uh, you know, as its own type really. Uh, and basically you have your functions uh, work a little bit differently. You have them um, 
uh, go through uh, and try to run and you explicitly check for an error and you catch that error into a variable and then you do a little bit of simple if statements and say hey if this error exists return that thing which is you know or do this thing which is a little more explicit and let's go look at that uh real quick we can mess around with it a little bit as well let's go to go by example um errors so it works a little bit differently here um and so er so you can also raise an exception um so like you can use this errors.new thing and go to you know uh raise raise an exception so you can do you can like do an if statement to check for something and raise a new error like this um but you can return both a value and an error uh check out this function here function definition we're taking in an integer and we were are returning an integer and an error um and so if you take a look at this like if we run this we can, we can run this in a second but it is handled a bit differently um a lot differently actually um here uh, a lot of times whenever you see these two whenever you see an e uh it's commonly used as the error in go um that's where you're kind of handling that so uh there's no really there's no try except here there's a do it um and if this variable ends up being a you know getting filled then check for it explicitly check for it um yeah explicitly check for that error and determine you know what to do with it then so it works you know it's a little a little more interesting i think it's a little more complicated of a process uh to kind of understand out of the box but yeah exceptions are kind of like the kick in inception ah yep there we go let's 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 keep uh let's keep that going i like that that is the type of thing that you can do an entire talk on and it not make any sense and if you say enough of the right big words people will be like ah yes that man knows what he's talking about <laughs> um so uh maybe we gotta do something with that so you raise and not throw an exception in python um yes Yep, uh, raise is just a keyword for throwing, um, basically, you know, different keywords, different, uh, you know, everyone's got their words to do certain things. Um, but yeah, you raise it instead. And again, you can choose the type of thing. Uh, so if you go to, let's go over to W3Schools. Um, yes, you can throw those errors um, in JavaScript. That raise keyword uh, in, in JavaScript is throw. Uh, so you can throw an error instead, which is kind of cool um i think throw is it's it's a, it's a little more idiomatic for what we know or for what like people know but um uh, you know i i kind of like raise i kind of like raise oh i actually i forgot about finally so this is actually something i never use uh i've 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 never used finally um there's been there's been situations where i probably could have um, but I've never used this finally thing, but it says, hey, the finally block lets you execute code regardless of the result of trying to accept blocks. Um, so regardless of what happens up here, uh, the last thing you do after this runs is you can finally do something here uh, to execute a piece of code. I really, I always forget about this because again, I never use it. Um, not, I'm not at all saying that it's useless at all. I'm sure it's very useful. I've just never found a I, I never found a situation in which I needed to do. Um, and, and all of the cases, I feel like it would have been done this, uh, I could have actually, I could have actually used it, this would have actually been the perfect thing to do, where I at the bottom of the code that we wrote here, the program keeps running error, uh, basically, the, I did this, I did the same functionality, basically. Um, so I basically, raise uh, i didn't raise that error but um this would actually not work um but if i do the finally here um if i do the final here i can do one last bit of code um that you know will do whatever it wants no matter what happens up here um, i'm actually interested to see this really quick because um if i raise the exception the exception ideally should take you out of this, but finally sounds like it's going to, you know, work anyway. So let's see what happens when we do this right here with the finally block and, uh, oh, interesting. Uh, it actually spit it out before, um, the error actually, um, you know, ran, which kind of makes sense. 
uh kind of makes sense because the raise is actually happening here but uh the you know during the run so the output would be at the end so that makes a little bit of sense um makes sense i guess but again like i said i generally don't use this um uh i guess I guess this will be a good use case if you are, so there are ways to, you know, with all these programming languages, you can modify files. So what they're doing right here is they're opening up a file called demo file.txt. They're writing something. Um, they're trying to write something. They're saying, hey, um, you know, if something goes wrong, go ahead and print this out and then close the file. Uh, closing the file is something that you should do, uh, kind of like the save there. Um, so that makes sense to do it here. That makes, that makes sense in this paradigm. Uh, for sure. Okay. Very interesting. Oh, well, yes. The, uh, very similar to what you said, PoE Broom Bob. Um, very useful for when you need to do something like that with the database connection. Makes sense. It definitely makes sense. Um, like I said, I'm not a software dev, um, but I'm looking forward to being able to find places to use these things. That is why I'm so excited about building all these things that we're going to be building, just because, like, I, I, w I, w I wanna, you know, I learn about so many different things. I, I have so many like little pieces of coding languages, pieces of, uh, of different things that I, I've never had the opportunity to use. I'm hoping that I can get the opportunity to use a lot of these things. Uh, in Python, you can swallow exceptions by saying accept exception, right? Uh, you can you can also accept it by like, I think you can just, uh, you can also swallow it by like doing nothing. I think you can, I think you can like continue, I believe. Like, I want to say you can do that. Maybe not. Um, maybe I'm thinking of a different language, but I think you can also just do like, I, I want to say you can continue out of this or pass. Maybe it's pass. Um, let's see what happens here. And yeah, so you could swallow it just like that as well. Um, so you don't really need to do, you don't need to do anything. Um, Ziad, you can just kind of, you know, if there is a problem, swallow it, pass through, don't raise anything, don't print out anything, and you can kind of move on. Whether or not that's a good practice depends on <laughs> the application itself. Um, but I would likely put something in there, some type of log, some type of something uh, for you to know that you're hitting a problem. Yeah. If we can't make it meaningful, perfect. I just, I just, I just, that's exactly what I was talking about. If you can't make it meaningful, uh, probably, you probably shouldn't even use it if you can't make it meaningful. Uh, um, once you learn one programming language, most of them are similar. Yep, uh, that is very true. That's why we've kind of just been running through and doing these. And, uh, you know, as you can see here, we are working in three different languages right now, JS, PY, and Go. They are um, very similar. Uh, well, a lot of the things are, you know, very similar across the board. That's why we're touching a lot of them all at once. Uh, but there's also a lot of paradigms, you know, uh, the intricacies of each language is very different to me, to be honest. Um, you know, and a lot of the great things that you can do in Python, uh, because of the, you know, vast standard library of things that are given to you, um, you can't do with Go standard library and you gotta be more explicit and you gotta be more verbose. Uh, so kind of, I don't know that the paradigm is, was pretty jarring when I actually was building things like all the simple stuff, like was easily is easily transferable. Like I'm very, I'm very confident. I could hop right over to any language that I don't know right now and do most of the simple stuff. Learn how to, you know, you learn how to, you learn how to make a variable. You learn how to, you know, do some loops. You can learn how to do some conditionals and you can kind of build out some basic programs, but there's a lot of, there's a lot of little intricacies in there that can get, make it a little bit tough. Um, so I'm excited to kind of learn some more of those things. Mm -hmm. I thought continue was only for loops. Maybe, um, probably. Um, I was thinking of past when I was saying continue, uh, but let's see, I have no idea. I have no clue. Let's find out. And you are correct. It's not properly in a loop. It is only for that. So we had it right the first time. We'll leave it back at pass. Um, and that works. Explicit is nice. B-Bytes back. I agree. Well, so I, 
yes i 100 percent agree i prefer um i'm telling you i didn't even really i didn't i wasn't even really thinking about what i was doing in programming until i went to go and again i i think the only i think that's the only reason i don't necessarily love go well i love go but i think i like it so much because i think it was just the programming language that helped me understand why i was doing what i was doing because i had to be uh explicit because i had to be verbose in a lot of situations like there weren't little uh there were there wasn't magic going on there wasn't all this syntactic sugar that was doing fancy stuff uh my brain works a little bit better when i can truly see the steps that are happening and it helped me out with a lot of stuff and you know i still have a lot to learn but um it helped me a ton um uh, helped me a, a whole lot so you know i it's got a special place in my heart the annoying part is setting up the dev environments um yeah um i don't know i don't know I, I i generally have never had any real problem setting up dev environments i i don't i don't i don't know if that has to do with my background with linux uh and kind of understanding how all those things are kind of working together but like everyone's always talking about stuff like that and i never have any problems maybe again that's also because when i'm setting up dev environments i'm just getting the basics of the language set up so i can do basic things um but i so far i don't i i don't run into uh, except for python virtual environments everything else is kind of fine um everything else works pretty well um you know and i'm usually able to to get things up and running no problem uh, my rust career is coming along quite nicely if you guys didn't know i am still participating i haven't been posting a lot about it but i am I'm, I'm doing 100 days of code with rust um and i've gotten quite far actually uh and um my goal is to also do all of the exorcism.io problems in rust as well just as i'm kind of learning it and uh you know i'm i'm a fair i'm i was a fair way through like pretty quickly uh just because i've done a lot of those problems and because again I have a core understanding of a lot of these things. Um, so I was really just learning, you know, syntax and the, the basic syntax of things that I already knew. Um, and now I'm starting to dive into the to the differences. And I'm getting into some concepts that I don't really know. Um, but we'll see, I, I'll try to figure out something I can do with it. Um, I'm still trying to figure out where it makes sense to use it at. Like, I'm not sure that I do anything that where, where Rust would really accelerate uh, or really provide a ton of value. Um, yet but again I'll, I'll find it i'll definitely find that spot but i think that's it like i said tonight would be very short and that is raising exceptions um there oh the other thing actually hold on let's take a look at um our exorcism stuff where did we put it we installed it via snap didn't we and it was problematic um Oh, no, we did. Uh, yeah, we did. Um, so it was actually in slash snap. I don't think this is where it is. It was in CD. Let me go home first. It's in a weird spot. It's actually download. Let's do this. All right. I just wanted to know where, where it was. So home uh, slash snap exorcism five exorcism Python. All right, so in here, um, we did this triangle thing last time. Uh, Vim, let's take a look at this readme. Actually, let's open up in VS Code just so we can look at the nice preview of it. Um, just so we can see the, you know, the real markdown preview. Everything was running fine. And we opened up one app and now, okay. It had like frozen for a little bit. Let's see the, Cool. this is the preview of it all right in here um you know it tells you what to do but notice down here it uh every single python one of these will give you this it says hey sometimes you'll need to raise an exception how would you know if you need to raise an exception the reason you would know is from the tests um there are um there are tests in here um in some of the different problem sets that will tell that will expect a specific type of exception to be raised um so that's what when you would use that raise keyword to properly do that um but that's what it's talking about in this piece um sometimes it's necessary to raise an exception uh when you do this you should include some meaningful error messages to indicate the source of this error 
Uh, and so I just wanted to bring that up if you were someone who's going through uh, those exorcism problems and you've been continuously reading this and not anything else. Um, and you know, and, and it's confusing you. Um, that is what they're talking about. They're just telling you kind of how this thing works. Um, and that sometimes you may need to do that. So yeah, just, you know, that's all I wanted to show you is that that's in there. You might have to do that for some other stuff as well. Um, I don't think they tell you that in any of the other, at least in Go, I don't think they tell you that. Maybe in JavaScript they do as well, but you ever get to any C sharp? Um, I have not done any C sharp yet, not because I don't want to. Um, I'm actually very interested in all of this new uh, Blazor stuff that, uh, that people are talking about. Um, yeah, I'm actually like this. It's looking real cool um, and I'm not opposed to it at all. Um, and I think it would be interesting to pick some projects to do in C Sharp, learn C Sharp, uh, build some stuff. I hear great things about it. Um, yeah, I hear really good things about it. So maybe we'll do some C Sharp stuff. I don't know any C, I don't, I don't know any C Sharp. I haven't done, well, I don't know C Sharp. I've done a, a couple of like very small things over the years in C Sharp. Um, but I don't know C sharp. Uh, I don't know it. So yeah, I would definitely check that out. Um, but like I said, blazer looks Pretty cool for building these web apps. Um, I think I want to check that out. You know, I, I, I think C sharp is really, um, you know, I think, I think, I think I've always had a general, like a lot of people I've had a general disdain for, uh, Microsoft stuff. Um, I think I think it happened for me specifically because I dove into Linux servers first and then I actually I've worked with, with Windows servers as well uh, and I gotta be honest um, I, I was surprised at how not good Windows servers were in comparison uh, and so I kind of had a bad taste in my mouth about Windows development products and Windows uh, products in the workplace and their systems um, but they have become uh, quite the juggernaut over the past few years. They're all pretty, they're, they're super dope. Uh, I love everything. I love everything that Microsoft has done over the years. Uh, I'm loving as someone who played, I've always stuck around with Microsoft because I play games. Uh, and now again, Microsoft is the most viable, complete platform for me right now. Uh, as soon as my desktop can move over to, uh, I can't get WSL2 on my desktop yet. Um, there's some incompatibilities, but as soon as it does, I will probably be using uh, Windows 10 full time for everything, even though I love Pop OS, of course, you know, my laptop is Pop OS, so full time as a, you know, like I won't have to switch back and forth. I won't need my VM. It's more so what I'm saying. I still would be using my Pop OS laptop because that is the laptop that I own. <laughs> um, but, you know, I love what, what Microsoft is doing. C Sharp looks super dope. People have been doing some cool things. Uh, the way that they've been developing things has been pretty interesting. Uh, and I'll be 100% uh, interested in hopping in and doing some stuff with that. Yeah, I know it's cross platform now. Again, Windows doing some, they've been doing some phenomenal stuff. GitHub's new design? Um, uh, I have not. Let's see. I, is this the new design? I don't think this is the new design. Um, so if, if it's not this, I have not seen their new design. Um, but I'm also interested in, you know, I'm gonna Google it real quick. GitHub's new design. Let's see if I can find anything here. Maybe this is it. June 23rd, 2020. Maybe it is. I can't tell. Can't really tell, but um, let me click on an actual uh, thing. Ah, you know what's funny? I have not seen this, and, but like it's here now. I, like I, this is clearly new and I actually like this. First off, for anyone who doesn't know, this is our, um, Hey, Maya, um, this is the synapse this is the thing that we were building. Um, synapse is the, I believe it's the, oh no, no, Cortex. We called it the, the front end, but this is actually the back end. Um, there's some stuff in here. Um, there's like a whole Netlify CMS thing set up. Uh, I need to fill out the readme. We'll fix that. Uh, so people know what to do with it. Uh, this will not do much for you. This is a very basic, this won't do anything. This will do very little for you. Um, but I like this. I do like the look and the feel of this. A little bit, you know, all the, the flat material designs. Is that what it's called? I'm just saying design words that I think that I know. I don't know if they're real. Uh, it feels flat. Uh, that's the word now. You know, flat uh, material design. Um, yes, clean. And, uh, sure. I, I'm really bad at design. 
I want to be good at it so bad though, um, but I'm really bad at it. C sharp almost done everything. Yeah, um, I also want to learn C sharp because I'm I'm interested. I, I don't necessarily want to develop an entire like big game, but like I, I'm interested. So I worked at a, I worked at a video game company. I worked at Cinemax Online Studios uh, for um, when we were working on Elder Scrolls Online, and like the amount of things that go into building a game. Like I'm just I'm interested in being participating in building a game just because like it just feels like such a massive undertaking. And I wanna know enough to like be a part of a project like that. Um, Cause I think it'll be, I just think it'll be interesting. And as someone who loves video games, I think it will just give me some more insight into some of that stuff. <laughs> I, had to, I had to use Skype today. I, I'm sorry that you had to use Skype today. Um, one of the things that frustrates me about Skype the most is that uh, when you start up your machine, uh, it like every time it like asks me a million things and I can't get it to go away. Like it's very frustrating, um, but I need it for certain things. I don't have to use it often, but there are a few people who I interact with who only use Skype, which is frustrating. I thought it had too. I really do. Skype used to be, you know, the champion, um, but no longer. Windows 80% of the time. That's how I am now. Um, I use Windows about 80% of the time now. I didn't used to, uh, I used to use Linux probably 90% of the time, but as I started doing more content creation, as I started playing more games, as I started to do a little more things, um, actually, and because my desktop is like powerful, I feel like I should, I should use it and I've been using it and it's been a good experience so far, um, for sure. Like, you know, I used to hate on windows a lot, but, uh, it's, you know, it's nice. It's nice. I will try unity shameless plug. Uh, you still know people as Zenimax. Um, I can check if any of them still work there. I don't know if they still work there, uh, but maybe I might. Um, if, if you want me to try to make any connections, I will try. Um, yeah. You've been working on Elder Scrolls Online? Uh, yeah, I was there for the launch of Elder Scrolls Online. Um, and I was there for the first, you know, probably five or six months that it ran. Um, good times i learned i learned a lot there uh and then i got moved to the overnight i actually had a great setup there i ended up um you know i worked in the knock i worked in the network operation center like i said for anyone who's new i'm a devops guy um so i'm, I'm i I've, I've dealt with you know large-scale infrastructures and a lot of other stuff but i actually lead a, a development team right now i actually leave a, a lead a software team uh now that's why i've been diving more and more into software over the years uh that's kind of why i know the software that i do know uh that's what i'm trying to get I'm trying to out to outrun you all. I'm not outrun you all, but before we get to the event, I'm not teaching the event section of the of Decoded until I feel like I'm there. Uh, so I actually might get someone else to do it. Um, I feel confident enough to go to the intermediate portion uh, by the time we get there. But um, I, 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 or the advanced portion will be me learning along with you all some of the more advanced concepts that I've come across and that I want to learn. Um, because again, that's, I'm, I'm, I'm not here to sugarcoat what I know. Um, but I was, I worked at the knock there, uh, network operations center. I worked at night. Um, after we kind of got good, I had worked in a number of, uh, knocks before. Um, and I knew how to, you know, I knew my way around some systems. Um, and so I actually got put on like the night shift lead. Uh, so that was kind of cool at the time because I had two full-time jobs. Um, and so I worked from like, I worked from like two in the afternoon to 10, two to 10. And then from like 11 to like eight, <laughs> like, and I just did that, you know, every day, uh, for a little while. Uh, and it's interesting because I was making, I was, <laughs> I'm making $35,000 more now with a single job than I was making with both jobs. Then just to show you how one times have changed and salaries have gone up, but two, how you can, this was probably five years ago. Uh, but how, you know, as you pick up new skills and things, you can really kind of advance what you're doing and you don't have to kill yourself uh, working, but it was fun. I was young, you know, I, you know I'm, I'm, I'm old. I'm an old man now. Uh, so I would never do that again. That was, that was wild, pretty wild actually. Um, but it was fun. Um, and then I, oh, then they moved me to weekend nights. So I worked from uh, 10 PM on Friday to 8 AM. So to three, 12 hour shifts over the weekend. And like, that was it Friday to Monday. 
and I got to pay the same amount of money uh, and it was very boring. I'm not gonna lie. It was pretty boring because it was like me and like one other person sometimes and they would take off all the time and like the way they did the shifts was weird, um, which is interesting because the weekend would be the time that most people were playing. But at that time, I actually think uh, playership is up since I was there. Um, but I don't know. I got kind of bored. I didn't take if I was smarter during that time, I would have learned more. I didn't like I played I played games because they said we could um like i didn't take that time to really like get good uh i could have probably really accelerated my career uh, but hey hindsight's 2020 i had a good time not gonna lie had a great time while i was there mm. microsoft teams is even more annoying than skype uh yes microsoft teams you know valiant effort i guess you know i you know they just wanted a product out there and the problem is it's one of those ecosystem things. A lot of companies are buying into it because they're already um, in Microsoft's ecosystem for a lot of other things. It's the Mac problem, but for enterprises, which is, you know, smart by Microsoft and it'll get better, but like, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, it's not great. I've used it, uh, it is not great. Um, yes, it is better for video calling, especially for like one-on-one -on -one video calling, but uh, it's, it's, you know, as a long time Slack user, it's just not, it's just, it's missing a lot of features. Um, it's not amazing, but it'll get there. It definitely will get there. Full stack dev, forcing myself into some DevOps stuff, my team. Yeah. Um, yeah, so nerves of steel, you just thought like at the end of the day, you know, when something goes bad, you're alive. You're not gonna die. Um, and generally a lot of DevOps people have been either sysadmins or dealt in a place where they were dealing with production systems already. And like, you get kind of used to stuff happening. Like, I said, like when I was at Zenimax, I'll tell the story before, but you know, I locked, you know, I locked a uh, hundred thousand people or like 60,000 people or something out of, out of their accounts uh, all at once, um, you know? And it's like, that was a big problem. Uh, it was a mistake on my end, but like, you know, all right, you know, keep it cool. Let's, you know, we, we, we did something wrong. Let's fix it. Um, I don't know. You, you learn how to stay calm in those situations. You learn how to, you know, it, it's, it, it becomes not that big of a thing. Like I'm not, people are afraid of production deploys. I'm not afraid. <laughs> I'm not I, YOLO. I will, it goes down, it goes down. We'll, we'll get it back up. I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay with the, you know, as long as we understand the system properly, as long as we've done our due diligence, you know, we can, uh, you know, fix the situation and we can get things back online most of the time. But, uh, yeah. Um, uh, respect the hustle. Uh, I, you know, so you say that I want I appreciate, you know, the, the signs of respect for that, but I did it because I had a run in with, uh, actually we have time real quick. Let me tell you the easy pass story. So, you know, um, I worked down, I worked in Baltimore, my very first big boy job, um, making $36,000 a year or maybe 37, 36, 37. It was at a company called Servant in Northern Virginia, a web hosting company, great place. Took me in, said, hey, we know we're gonna have, we're gonna basically pay you crap because we know um, there's gonna be high turnover here. We're gonna train you up on Linux. You are going to manage these Linux servers for us. Um, and you know, and in a year you're gonna move on and you'll be better off for it. And so, you know, they sat down and they they trained me in Linux for almost five, like five months. Um, and then I, you know, I managed Linux servers for another six or seven months. Um, and you know, it was great. Everything was, was great. I love that place. Um, but I was driving down there from Baltimore, Northern Virginia, very far. I was at the time I was driving in, you know, this was fresh out of school. I was driving in a car that my, my mom had got for me and it was in her name and you know, no big deal driving. She said, Hey, you're working, you're, you're doing what you're supposed to do. I'm going to also, I know you have to pay some tolls cause I had to pay tolls there. I had to pay two tolls each way. Um, it was about, I think, it, I think total, it was like. Uh, total of maybe 480 a day, almost five dollars a day. She said, I got you, I'll take care of the tolls for you. Just only worry about getting that experience, making sure you do a good job. I have a great, I have great parents, and I appreciated that. So she gave me her easy pass. Cool, going to work, not worrying about anything, all great, you know, young, wild, and free. Then I'm like, All right, I have no bills. <laughs> I have, you know, so I'm. I have my mom's car and say, hey mom, I'm gonna give you back this car and I'm gonna go buy my own car. I'm gonna get my own, I'm gonna make my first big boy decision and start living my life. And I get my own car. 
great get it all is good take the easy pass out put it in my car keep driving to work every day <clears throat> i'm not living at home but my at my license and everything my car is still registered at my parents house you know but uh you know i'm, I'm not living there my mom hits me up one day it's like hey you got a bunch of easy pass notices here you know what do we do with them i'm like oh i don't know you know don't worry about it i'm young i'm dumb i'm not worried about any of that i'll come get them wait a while i go get them you know i go, stop by my parents say hello they give me all my easy pass notes i'm like mom there are a lot of easy pass notices here what you didn't think to tell me about this she's like i'm not i'm not checking for you i'm not thinking about your mail i throw it in the bucket when it comes home you know and you come to get it when you want to get it so i'll start opening them up it says hey you owe some tolls you owe like and i'm like ah oh, it's really weird like i have the easy pass you know why do i owe some stuff uh basically um the transponder in the car it was an older transponder was dead the easy pass transponder was dead if you're not on the east coast i think easy pass is only on the east coast i think it's called different things elsewhere i think florida's called sun pass but it basically allows you to go through tolls without you know having to whip out cash uh but it was registered to my mom the account was registered to my mom and the car that i was driving before was registered to my mom but my car was not so before the easy pass transponder was old the battery in it was dead it was actually dead it was never being read but because my mom had an account they were mapping her license plate to the easy pass account taking out the money when i got my car uh that i was still riding through not really realizing what was happening and they, they were not able to map the car back to the account and they were not taking out the money and my mom didn't notice you know i never asked because you know not my account i didn't really think about that it wasn't something i thought about and uh and yeah so basically i'm going through four tolls a day um i don't realize for mo literally months and what ends up happening is i get tons of things i paid a bunch of money um like i think i ended up paying two or three payments of like a thousand dollars for tolls because of the fees that have been added on and then they deliver a stack they like they stop sending them in like at a couple at a time and they sent like a package with a stack of them with like 300 toll violations or something something crazy whatever we're like hey we're gonna go we're gonna go talk to them we're gonna go fight this so let's let them know what happened i'll pay the tolls understandable you know my mistake we should have been paying attention to what was coming out of the account but you know we'll go we'll go get this worked out uh don't mess with easy pass first off um we for sure got there and the guy was like yeah like um you know uh you do want to talk about settling first and i was like uh we could talk but like you know i have a you know it was a mistake you know i was just i will pay the tolls i gave him the story had paperwork showing when the tolls stopped coming out of my mom's account and when i bought the, the new car to kind of just corroborate my story they don't care about that at all they're like hey well you know you can you can fight it uh you can choose to fight it you might owe this much money but you know or you can pay this amount the amount the amount was like six thousand dollars i was like i'm good i'm fighting this i'm not giving y'all six thousand dollars it's not happening I'm fighting this and uh so i fought it uh and well, first off i thought i was there to to fight it and this was like the, the pre-session or whatever and so go to fight it and we go like apparently i'm not even really fighting apparently this is another escalation session and we talk about it and they say, hey, all these fees have accrued since the last time. The fees do not stop accruing. This is like another two months later. The fees don't stop accruing, um, the late fees. And you go in and they tell me how much I could owe if I go to the final stages. And like, I'm not joking. They told me I could owe almost $100,000 in toll violations. And I was like, this doesn't make any sense. Like, how is this legal? But we did our research. There are people, there, there's stories of people for like eight dollars in toll violations ending up owing 30 and forty thousand dollars and they have to pay it uh pretty darn wild uh so they basically gave me an out they basically like hey you know you can settle right now today we'll put you on a payment plan you know for uh a cool uh eighteen thousand dollars and uh, i owed easy pass a cool like it wasn't 18 it was like 15 something i think was the final amount i'll dig it up like 15 something so i got that second job you guys were saying you know respect the hustle respect the grind i did it for survival i was so hurt i was making 36k i went and got a brand so actually that was a catalyst for a lot of my career i went and got a new job i almost doubled my salary i went from like 36k to like 60k um at a new web hosting company and then i got the job at zenimax uh and i was making like 58 there so like you know i was doing pretty good for myself you know and it was all just to pay that off and i paid it off pretty pretty like pretty quickly uh, that's why I was killing myself for a little while, but I was like, I was like 23, 24, 
2324 and yeah it was it was rough times uh, rough time i thought i was like i'm going to jail i was like they just gonna take me to jail i was like i'm not paying these people thirty six thousand dollars i was like i'll be on the run forever like that's how i felt they put me on that payment plan they put me on like a six-year payment plan i was like ah, i gotta nah ain't happening that's a car that's a nice car i gotta just i'm just gonna pay these people off and i did um and i'm proud of myself for it but every every time i think about it it infuriates me because you know you know i could have done it I, at that time at that time i had my bills my bills were my car note my car insurance cost more than my car note because i was dumb i bought a mustang that was stupid a uh, big mistake um and my, my car note was like it was a cheap it was a used mustang my car note was like 200 and something dollars and my and my insurance was like 300 dollars. and my rent i live with a bunch of friends still like after school and like and like off-campus housing and my rent was like 300 dollars, like 400 dollars or something like that so like i was like i'm rich all i'm paying for is gas but i wasn't rich because i was giving all of my money to easy pass virginia specifically not easy pass maryland easy pass virginia pretty garbage that's my story <laughs> um i'm glad we had time to finally talk about that give respect the hustle I, I i appreciate it i guess um yeah system system 1100 um yeah it, it i will say it it was good for me it was good in that in that i started to look for avenues in tech that i didn't like i just look for ways to make more money like i was purely just looking for ways to make more money uh and it helped show me that like in in looking for the answers um i was able to find people who could help me along the way i was able to find opportunities i was able to find like oh like oh people are like learning this thing and you can get paid a lot for learning this thing and i would barely learn the thing like i would like barely learn it and no one else knew it so they hired me for stuff um i was never the best at anywhere that i went still not the best at anywhere that like like absolutely not the best anywhere that i went um but everything generally worked out i, I do work hard um you know i and i am a good i am a good problem solver um i think that's what really holds my weight rather than my technical skills it's just that i'm a pretty good problem solver um but yeah you know just fun times uh definitely fun times and that's why i know that's why i know people can uh like it, you know the journey into tech is, is scary like it's it is it's rough uh it's scary um but i'm pretty confident that you know 90 percent of people out there you know it's not for everybody but 99 percent of people who want to do it can do it um you know can find their way through it can just you know flip and fumble your way there are places that'll hire you uh that's pretty wild Oh yes, can't stand VA. I got, you know, I got I got one of those. You know, it's a um reckless driving in Virginia if you're going over 80 miles an hour, but they have places on the highway where the speed limit's 70. What kind of sense does that make? I got a ticket going 83 and a 70 in Virginia and had to show up for court, reckless driving. Luckily I got off of it. You just had to say you were guilty, pay your fine. It was like three hundred dollars. Uh but yes, <laughs> you should have filed for bankruptcy. Um, yeah, you know, maybe I should have maybe in hindsight you know i it, it sucks because i just turned 30 so i would just be recovering from that bankruptcy i feel like but i don't know um i think i think bankruptcy seven years you know uh but there's there's always a way there's always a way yeah, it's okay it's all right uh but i will say i will say this also um i was young with very with i i had a I had champagne taste. I did not have champagne money, but I had champagne taste. And if that did not happen to me, I guarantee you right now, I guarantee it, that right now I will be sitting here with a, well, maybe I'm, first off, I wouldn't be sitting here, but two, wherever I was sitting, I, I, I may still be in the same place, you know, uh, I might still be in the same place financially, like with the with the amount that I've been able to earn, but I guarantee you will be tied up in a car that's too expensive, uh, mostly probably two cars that were too expensive and a terrible apartment and, uh, you know, probably something else stupid. Uh, and I'll be, I'll you know, I'll be kind of stupid right now. I'll kind of be useless, wasting my money on things that I shouldn't be wasting my money on. Uh, one day I'll, I'll show you guys my, uh, our boat. Uh, we lived on a one-way street in the middle of Baltimore, and we purchased a boat because we had no other bills. Uh, and uh, you know that boat never touched water; it actually got stolen. We wore, we bought captain's hats and we threw parties on it, and it was exciting. Uh, but now we just did we just stupid stuff, really dumb, really dumb stuff. I'm fortunate enough to you know everyone doesn't recover from their you know early twenties blunders. I was fortunate enough to make it out unscathed. Um, and so this is uh everything i'm doing now is my repayment to society 
for all of the stupid stuff that I did and made it out okay. Uh, but yeah, it did work. Yes, a boat, yes, it got stolen. Or that, or the guy I bought it with, uh, it's possible that he sold it um, and and kept all the money. Equally as plausible. Uh, it, not, a, not an amazing boat. It was an old fishing be- vessel named the Lady Harriet. 28 foot boat on a trailer, had a bathroom in it. Again, had no idea if it ran uh, at all. <laughs> um, got it off of, a, he was a real estate agent and um, someone's estate, someone's dad had passed on an estate and she just wanted the boat off the estate. I think we gave her like, we were like 2000 bucks or something for this 28 foot boat and we took it and we parked it on the street and the cops were like, hey, they like knocked on the door and I'm like, hey, I don't know what ordinance says you can't have this boat on this street, but you got to move this boat off the street. And we we're like, I'm sure you're correct. I'm 1000% sure you're correct, but we do not have a truck. <laughs> we had no way to move it. I had a Mustang at the time. He actually had a yellow Camaro. I have pictures of that. We were, I don't know who we thought we were uh, at all, but we were, we thought we were important and we thought we were cool. And uh, yeah, with our boat that we cannot use. Cozy coding, welcome, welcome cozy to the channel. Thank you so much for the raid. You are the second raid of the night. I do appreciate it. You just missed our stories. Just telling everyone about my life, um, about things that, um, you know, about my early dev career, or not even dev career, my early tech career, and kind of what led me to where we are now. So welcome. I'm glad you're all able to come through. We just learned a little bit about handling errors tonight in various languages, uh, but we're kind of done up. Um, we're actually kind of done up. Everyone from Cozy Coding, welcome. If you don't know, my name is Mastermind. Um, my name is not Mastermind. My name is Aaron. My channel is called Mastermind. This is Mastermind Academy. Uh, we do a, a lot of boot camp style um, events. We do kind of just technical training series, all kinds. Um, this one is called Decoded. It is a journey into software engineering and computer science. Uh, it is an eight week, uh, it is three eight week courses. This is the apprentice level. So the first level, we will be moving uh, into the intermediate level. It's called the journeyman level, uh, probably in a couple weeks, probably in two or three weeks. Um, information will be coming on about that soon. We also run one right now called Horizons, which is a journey into cloud computing. And that runs on Mondays and Wednesdays, and we're finishing that up. And we also run one called Pipelines, which is on hold right now, but we'll be starting up probably in a single week. Um, so if you wanna learn anything about any of these topics, you know, this is where you want to be. Um, but yeah, that is, uh, that's my story about easy pass. And that's, that's, you know, that's my story about what helped me move a little bit farther into tech. Um, cause really that ended up giving me, um, that ended up giving me so much experience, like working at two completely separate places, um, that did two completely different things. Like I got a wealth of experience doing that, even though it was tiring. Um, and it kind of gave me double the experience. And so then I left there. I saw, wait, I was making 60 at one and 57 in the other. So like, I was like 23, you know, at the time I was working 80 hours a week, but I was making a hundred thousand dollars. I was like, I'm the man, I'm the greatest who ever did it. No one's smarter than me. Couldn't handle it anymore after I paid off my debt. Um, I couldn't handle it anymore. And then I went and got a job. I, then I worked for the Better Business Bureau. That was great. Everyone thinks they're a government organization. Not true. They are the, they're one of the biggest nonprofits. They're actually a nonprofit. Um, they had a fully remote workforce. That place was actually really cool. Um, I took, you know, quite the pay cut, but I was making more in a single job than I ever made. Uh, oh no, 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 no. I lied to you. I took a government, I took a government contracting job first. I despised it with everything. And I hated it so much. And I, a situation happened and I walked out actually with no job. You know, I think I was making like 69 there. Uh, I walked out got a job within the week at the Better Business Bureau, making like 76 or 77. I was like, I'm the man, this was the best. Like I was like, I was doing, I was doing the stuff that I, that I knew I was doing systems administration. They were doing a big data center shift. Um, it was, I don't know, it was fun. It was fully remote. That's where I learned the remote life is not necessarily the life for me. Um, I get it. I understand why people love it. Um, it does allow you some flexibility with your home life, but like, man, it was, I was getting cabin fever. It was a struggle for me, uh, to be honest. I worked there for a little over a year. That's pretty dope. But that led to some other opportunities to work at some startups. That was fun, kind of fun, I guess. Um, yeah, and all that ultimately led me to where I am now. And I feel like I've had, you know, where I am now has been the most impactful. Uh, it's been pretty interesting. And that's why we're doing this. Um, that's why, that's how we got here, essentially. So story time is over now.
Ah, yes, I like so I love ah, I love the different spelling a r e. I love that. That's it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Ah, P P five J S. Let's see. Um, I've heard of I've heard of that. Um, software educational streets of P five J S. Dope. First off, so one shout out to cozy coding. Uh, that sounds pretty cool. I'll definitely check that out. Um, I don't really know much about P five J S at all. Let's check that out. JavaScript library for creative coding with a focus on making coding accessible, inclusive for uh, that's dope. For artists, designers, educators, beginners, I like this. I will definitely be checking you out. Um, this is this is great, actually. I'm interested to see more about this. I want to see what this really means. Um, I will be checking you out right after this because um, I've I've had some people reach out to me um, for some groups in the area for uh, for like uh, middle schoolers um and this sounds beginners and for educators we were trying to work on some ways to teach um schools really have trouble getting uh, having the budget for teachers who know how to code um and finding some type of way uh structure to be able to teach them would also be cool so i definitely want to check that out i might have some good questions for you yes i have heard of coding train zachary p um I, I watched a number of coding trains videos because I thought they were super impressive. Um, and as I was trying to, you know, find some different ways uh, to do some things, uh, I think coding train does a lot of dope stuff. Um, yeah, coding train is cool. Heavily into P5. Okay, maybe I maybe I've seen some of the stuff then um, and not knowing what I was looking at, but I, I doubt it actually. Um, but yes, I was also surprised at how big the coding trains channel is. Um, pretty impressive actually and that like i was surprised i had never heard you know a, a coding channel with over a million subscri subscribers i watched some of the videos and like phen phenomenal the way that uh he explains a lot of these things uh and how creative he is like i it's impressive um so yeah i'll definitely check out some of this p5 stuff um because uh it sounds pretty interesting for some projects and for some things i'm trying to think about mm. Workouts when I work instead of being confined to the office. Uh, yeah, that's true. Um, that is very true. Uh, if we, you know, for when you want to go, when you want to work out, uh, working from home absolutely provides that because you're taking away the, you know, you under people underestimate the time they spend commuting for one. Um, but yeah, for working out, it does make it a lot easier. Um, it's weird because we've been home all this time and I've been working out less. But that's mostly because I didn't have access to a gym and I'm way too unmotivated to do hard workouts on my own. That's why I like the bikes. I really like that I'm into cycling now a little bit. Cycling, you can ride uh, where you're feeling great and you're happy and you're like, oh yes, nature. You ride uh, until you get tired. And then once you get tired, you have to come home. So now that's where the workout comes in. Uh, so I do like that paradigm. If I have to jog, I'll get to the end of my block and I'll say, yep, I'm good. I'll walk home now. So I'm not gonna do any of that. Mm, 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 mm. Yes, I did. Uh, so I saw a part of your uh, a part of your talk. I had to I stuck around for some of the morning um, for some of the morning ones, uh, but I missed a lot of them. I'm actually still going through some of the talks. Um, I'll definitely check yours out. Um, sorry, I wasn't able to watch all of them. I actually had a, <laughs> I'm I'm glad that the things that I had to do on Saturday, I I'm really bad at managing my calendar and I probably shouldn't have scheduled I probably like I was, you know, they said there was a spot open to talk. I was like, yeah, I want that spot to talk. But uh, as soon as we were done, I had to get out of here and leave. So I'll definitely check that out. That's pretty dope. Did you speak about P5? Um, oh, you did an intro to P5. Dope. I'll check that out. That's pretty awesome. Definitely pretty awesome. Oh, he's a college professor. That makes sense. Um, that makes a lot of sense because I'm like, man, he knows a lot and he knows how to teach well, like very well. And he does have a lot of energy uh, for sure. But cool, I'll give you all 15 minutes, 16 minutes, 17 minutes of your life back tonight. Um, you know, one, tangible takeaways for tonight. The tangible takeaways simply are that uh, sometimes code uh, runs into issues. Sometimes your interpreter, sometimes your uh, the compiler does not know what to do with the code that you wrote. Sometimes you did things that don't uh, comply with the rules associated with that language or the structure. 
and uh, this is where errors come into play. You can use errors to one, uh, understanding them helps you understand how to fix issues with your code uh, and, and being able to identify what you're running into really does uh, speed up uh, the debugging process. And uh, two, that you can use these, these errors effectively to give feedback about things that are happening inside of your code. Uh, and you can also use the, use them you know to control the flow of your code and make certain things happen uh and that's and that's really it not a crazy complicated concept i'm glad we got to dive into a, a number of languages just to kind of see what those things look like again you will run into all types of errors hopefully um you know we can make them just a little bit less scary um as you're kind of going along uh because they are again they are you know gives you a lot of text and you're like oh what's going on um but yeah, that's all errors are. And that really does wrap up, you know, the basics of of programming. So again, this is the apprentice level course. We dove into a lot of things. You got the base level things like variables and you got things like functions and you got things like different data types and you got things like, you know, basic data structures that are also uh, mostly, you know, data types as well. Uh, we learned, you know, some conditionals and we learned, you know, how to control the flow of a program based on uh, information that happens. We learned about arguments inside of functions. We learned about um, loops, the different kind of loops that we have to be able to, you know, run a piece of code uh, multiple times based on the scenario that we that we have we learn how to do a little bit of math we learn how to do some string manipulation you know we learn how to do uppercase things lowercase things all that stuff um we learn about you know managing strings and concatenation and interpolation and uh yeah we just learned about a bunch of different things we learned about functional programming we learned about object oriented programming um you know we, we got to touch you know stick our feet in to a, all of the different uh, little concepts that make up um, you know, uh, uh, that you need to be, to become a good programmer, not everything, not exhaustive, but a lot of different things. Now, what's after this, what's after this is, um, uh, in the intermediate level course in the journeyman level course of this, we will now be, uh, using these things to learn more, um, computer science concepts. Uh, cause we didn't learn a ton of computer science concepts. We d again, we dove into some of those things. We didn't dive into the computer science -y things, the theory of a lot of things. Uh, but I think that, I think that's for good reason. Uh, I, you know, it was a gamble. Um, a lot of people say you want to learn that stuff first. Uh, I, you know, I just went the way that my mind worked a little bit and we'll be diving a little bit more into the theory of things, uh, while building things as well in the intermediate level course. So that's what we'll be doing. Keep an eye out for that. We'll probably stick closer to a single language for that course because we'll be building so many different things. Um, but again, we'll still keep it, um, we'll still keep it a little bit, uh, you know, um, open to what we're doing. Uh, like I said, that'll probably be in a, a couple of weeks, probably three weeks. That's probably when we'll start that up. Um, but in between, keep an eye out for the Linux stuff. Keep an eye out for uh, pipelines. If you're interested in that, we will be doing some coding and pipelines. Keep an eye out for the Docker stuff as well. Um, schedule coming out. Schedule coming out Thursday. It's going to come out tomorrow, Thursday. Uh, but tomorrow, if anyone is interested, uh, tomorrow we are doing a panel to wrap up Horizons. So if you want to hear from some uh, people in the industry who uh, deal with cloud computing, um, just engineers who they, they code as well. Uh, you want to ask whatever questions. If you want to hear their story, like I told a little bit of mine tonight, if you want to ask about salary information, if you want to ask, you know, about, hey, what new technologies do you think I should learn to get a job? If you want to ask, hey, what, what are some interview techniques? Whatever, whatever you want to ask, uh, come through tomorrow. Um, for that uh and then we will be doing one also for this series to wrap up this series of decoded uh and we'll have some software engineers on here of all different levels not all experts uh there will be some beginners on here as well to kind of let you know what their experience has been like so far in the industry uh, i think it's interesting to get that perspective as well so be tuned in you know uh if you want to find out any of that information but uh yeah a lot of cool stuff coming up. Thank you so much tonight, Coding Garden, for the raid. For the raid. Uh, also, thank you. Um, I, I never remember how to say your name, and every time I read it, I I, I struggle. So I'm gonna go back up and see if I see it. It's Sue. Sue, where to go? I know you're in here. Maybe I can't go up that far. But we got a second raid tonight by. Uh, but I, I think that was the same person who did the the kind of sciencey stuff before. So I'll definitely check you out. Thank you. Sorry I didn't get you a shout out. I will get you a shout out next time. Uh, but I appreciate it. But yeah, 
excellent we're gonna have a good time so let's see who we're we gonna head over to see tonight because uh for everyone new at the end of every stream we have to go over and raid someone and you know the Prime's always gonna be here at the top as we get here. And you know, every so often he Prime is, you know, I'm sorry, all the other streamers who hang out in here. I have a lot of people who I love, but right now Prime has my heart. He's, he, I, you know, maybe because I'm trying to learn Vim right now. Uh, he's a very entertaining streamer. We're gonna head over and say hello to the Prime again and learn a little bit about Vim Rat. He's building a pretty dope game um, for Vim. Uh, so check it out, but we will head over right now. Let's see if I can spell it right. Primey egg. I'm, I'm never gonna remember it. I need a button to just head over there, but we're out of here in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Pat yourselves on the back. You made it through all the complicated stuff for these eight weeks. Thanks for sticking with me. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope that uh, you got a lot out of it. And we are, you know, it's not over. We're gonna continue doing a lot. So everyone have an excellent night. Peace out.